Dear Jamie, in my younger days before you was born, me and Bartle Bone and Jim Rags spent a time as mule skinners for General Custer. Three of us were used to hunting and trapping the Rockies, so we didn't realize taking orders be so hard to stomach. By that time, the silver had run out, the railroads were coming, and everything was about to change. But the adventures weren't quite over yet. Mule skinners, you say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure you ain't trappers? Well, we were trappers 25 years, but... No more. Rockies, all trapped out. We were scouts, too. We know every trail, creek, pond, river, between Colorado and Canada. We was hoping the Custard need a couple of scouts, but seeing as how those positions been filled by Bill Hickok and, um, and a couple of crow. Seeing how them positions done filled, well, mule skinners. Yeah. You don't look like much, fella. Sure you can crack a bull whip? only two ways for a woman to survive out west. Wifing and whoring. As I weren't cut out for either one, I had to find my own way of surviving. So I lived like a man and sometimes even passed myself off as one. Got a little sticky at times, but gave me a kind of freedom that few women ever knew. Custer know he's got a female bullwhacker? Of course he don't. Don't you go telling him. Don't I always keep your secrets? Where are you going? You're supposed to be scouting this expedition. About to go out and hunt up some fresh meat when you tried to kill me. <laughs> if I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. <laughs> what do you want? All these years, I never could quite figure you out. You never will, Hickok. beans tonight. I think he was sickly. Moving awful slow. Hogwash! Yeah, well, I ain't eating it. I ain't up to digesting diseased animal. Suit yourself! Oh. We didn't know it then, Jamie. Them was the last of the Wild West times. 
before everything changed and Billy Cody made a show of it. Them last few days of wildness was our glory days. Wild Bill Hickok, Dora and Blue, Jim and Bartle, Buffalo Bill Cody, and your mother, Calamity Jane. I always enjoy seeing a lady in her underwear. <laughs> what you packing up for? You just made camp. All these years, Mark Dane, I never presumed to give you advice. But you ought to take Bartle and Jim and get out of here. Why? Maybe just because you know me. I'm telling you, it's a good time to go. Thanks, Bill. Where are you headed? Deadwood! Yes, sir! Ready, General? Looks like we're heading for the Big Horn. You hoping to find more gold? You dismissed, Captain. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who told you that, mister? We're gonna clear out any Indians that fail to obey the relocation notice. <laughs> Where did you post this, you notice, and what language was it in? I don't need your advice, mister. I have my own scouts. Yeah, but they ain't Sioux. This is hunting season now, and there's going to be thousands of Sioux. Do not tell me how to fight Indians. I took down Black Kettle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we heard about it. But we're talking about Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. They ain't going to leave their hunting grounds. You only got two... 300 men here. We are the 7th Cavalry. Did you hear that? Yep. I don't right remember who first called me Calamity or why, but it's no mystery why it's stuck. Your mother don't always think first before jumping in, Jane. When Custer found out I was a woman, he forced me into doing damn humiliating woman's work. Hey, Clam! We're moving out! I'll catch up with you, boys. As soon as I can. Calamity? Don't take too long. That general is crazy. He's crazy. Let's go. Jim and Bartle were among the few left who remembered the days when beaver were plentiful. Boys knew every river from the Oregon Trail to the Rio Grande. They could never quite figure out that what they were searching for they'd already used up. The Indians were dwindling, the buffalo were gone, and with them went the life we knew. This pond used to be boiling with beaver. I can still hear it sometimes when I'm asleep. What? That sound, that slapping sound a beaver's tail makes on the water. Yeah. Sometimes I, I can hear it too. life of every gold town when it either gets civilized or goes bust. Before it makes up its mind which, men go crazy drinking, gambling, and whoring. Cutting into each other's claims and shooting each other over trifles. Deadwood just happened to be in its hellfire days. Well, ain't this a sight for sore eyes? Morning, Harry. First one still on the house? Only for you, Clam. He got kicked out the army. You sure as hell travels fast, but don't that beat all? 
think the damn fools never saw dates before. <laughs> All right, you debop sinners. Let's drink to my bazooms. They got me out of custards of regulars. Bless them all. Large and small. Have you? Hey, Clem. Yes, sir, sweetheart. Well, you two women, you just... Hey, yo! <laughs> Get out of my bed. Do you stink? <laughs> so you shut me down finally in Deadwood? No, it's getting mean here. You know how it is. Where do you figure I'm moving to next? Some place closer to Blue's Ranch, I guess. Why don't she just marry him? She asked you a hundred times. You know I can't do that. Mercy, Mother Jane, you lose a hugging contest with a skunk? You know damn well that ain't skunk, do you? It's Chris. Yeah, I'll burn these for you. Hey! Watch out, there's money in them pockets. If there's money, I'll find it. Don't you worry about that. All right, tell me. What's different about you? Nothing. Something's different about you. Come on, you know you can't lie to me. I ain't lying to you, Dora. Damn it. Oh my God, Martha Jane. I've known you for 20 years and this has never happened to you. Well, nothing's happened to me. You are in love. Oh God. What's the point? I'd rather die than have him know it. It's Hickok, is it? No! Hickok, Wild Bill. Oh, let me think. Oh, no, Dora, don't start thinking. It's a long way from hopeless. He don't like princess, and he don't even like whores that much, but we're gonna get him to like you. I don't want him to like me. I just want to die. Okay, well, it's a serious condition, darling, but it ain't fatal. Now, here, get out of that tub, because we've got work to do. There. Open your eyes. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Here, stand up. You see? Aren't you beautiful? I don't look anything like myself. Oh, yes, you do. You look exactly like yourself. Thank 
he's gonna like me? Oh, honey, every man in that place is gonna want you so bad it's gonna hurt. I guarantee it. Now walk like this, all right? <laughs> Water, Harry. Water? That's right. He wants to stay in charge to drink half of what they drink. I get it, lady. Hey. Well, yeah. you've been holding out in the world, Martha Jane. Watching you. Damn. Now get back there. These half wits can do it. You sure as hell can. Come on, Chester. Your turn. That's grizzly wrestling. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. There he is. Go on over there and see how the game's going. I can't. You want to do another round of grizzlies? No, come on. Come here, darling. Have a seat. I need a lucky charm. Guess who I got sitting on my knee? It's Calamity Jane. Oh, oh Gloom. She'll be all right. No, she won't. Not out there. Not dressed like that. Oh, this is Calamity. She can take care of herself. She'll be back. 
No, she won't. Not to dead one. Sleep with you worrying. Oh, I can't help worrying you. It's all my fault. I never should have gotten her all gussy that. Bill Hickok is a son of a bitch. He sure is. You know, there have been times in my life I might not have made it if it wasn't for Jane. Yeah, you done the same for her. I've seen it myself. Lots of times. No. It makes me sad that no man has ever loved her, you know? Mm. That's something they can never say about you, Hill. Mm. Mm. When are you gonna marry me, Dora? I gotta get back to my ranch. Come with me. Mm. Can't. I love you, Bill. Mm -hmm. You know how much I love you. But I can't marry you. Yeah, well, you better quit saying that. Because one day I might quit asking. I am thinking about moving closer, though. You know? <laughs> Maybe opening a hotel in my city. You are a stubborn old catfish. <laughs> but I'm gonna reel you in. A few miles at a time. Till eventually I land you as my wife. Got any dry wood? I would have brought some with me, but I didn't know anyone was in Wyoming. Where you been? <sighs> I ain't seen you in over a month. I wanted to see if any of my people were left in the Dakotas. Any luck finding them? A few are there. But only their spirits. You should not go this way. I came to tell you this. Well, I'm headed for the Yellowstone this morning. I always go this way. Go another way. Why? Smell of death. Maybe 50 miles. Well, I ain't going 50 miles out of my way. I ain't spooked by death. I nursed the miners out there in Deadwood through scarlet fever. 40 of them died. Ain't nothing worse than that. Your dog sure lived long for one who likes to chase bears. 
so have you, and so have I. <laughs> <laughs> Want some coffee, no ears? I'll watch that. When no ears was ten, his people got into a fight with some French traders. He woke to discover that his people were dead and his ears were cut off. He could still hear in a whistling kind of way, and he could always sense things no one else could, especially death. Esther. I saw the flag. We should tell somebody. Why? Was that massacre back there? Was that like the one where they cut off your ears and left you for dead? I was just a child. But all massacres are alike. The smell of death. The big birds to pick the bones clean. But then, there were only Indian dead. And only me to sing for them. I must have eaten something bad this morning. I usually got a stronger stomach than that. It is because of the child. Child? I didn't see no child. The one you're carrying. You're crazy. That's impossible. I might be crazy, but you know it is possible. But that can't be. I mean, I can't. I can't have a child. You will, in the spring. God almighty. I can't be nobody's mother. I got no kind of life. I got no place to live. What am I gonna do? If you need a place to go before the child comes, I know of a place. How will I live? You will live. You always seem to be looking out for me, Noyers. Why is that? These fish are ready. Come and have some. Where is this place? I could hold up. The Wind River, about four days' ride. Thanks.
make snow ears. China now. Here, Dizzy. Well, Madame Dora. I'm not French, Hickok. You're not? No. Next thing you'll be telling me you're not a madam, neither. Men like you are the reason that I'm leaving this town. I'm sorry to hear that. They are lost. I really thought of myself as a woman, Janie. I guess that's why I didn't really feel like myself when I was carrying you. I was with Dora when she had her babies. None of them lived. But well, part of me never really let myself believe that you'd be real. Without her babies to hold her in place, Dora had a restlessness inside her that kept her moving from one hotel to the next, one town to another. She could never find any peace except when she was with Blue. But I stayed put all those months, holed up, waiting for you to come. just a plain fact. I ain't saying it for pity. But because of your daddy, I know what it is to love one. I want you to know that you were born out of as good a love as anybody gets born from, honey. But don't you ever forget that. The smell of death is strong here. Even you must smell it. Gunpowder, kerosene, and piss. That's all I smell. There, see? Whoever he is, it's no grief to me. <laughs> Who was that they hanged? Jack McCall. What'd they hang him for? Kill them all, Bill Hickok. Just a moment. Where's Dora Dufran? She's gone. She uh, sold out and moved away six months ago. speak to you for a moment. Whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. I'm not selling anything. I would just like to talk to you. Please, just for a moment. Is 
Is this your child? What of it? May I ask where the father is? Murdered. If I'd have got here sooner, I'd have cut the liver out of Jack McCall and hung it on a tree, Indian style. Did your husband leave you sufficient means? No, he did not. And he weren't my husband. I can see you're in a terrible predicament. <laughs> my name is O'Neill. Captain James O'Neill. My wife and I lost a child a short time ago. A baby girl. That's why we came out here. I thought a journey up west might be a distraction for my wife from her grief. Where are you from? I'm from England originally, but we live in Illinois now, near Mary's family. Illinois? It's been a terribly difficult time for my wife. Well, uh, it's been a terribly difficult time for both of us. You see, we can't have any more children. It might kill her. Girl. I love you, you son of a bitch. Dear Janie, it's been more than five years now since your daddy was killed. I miss him, and I miss you. I know now that the way I felt about Wild Bill only happens to a person once in their life. Like Doran Blue. It's the same kind of love. They just don't know what to do with it. First thing in the morning. I can't. Why not? I don't understand you, Tori. Why won't you even come out and look at it? Because I'd probably love it, and that would make it even harder. Just tell me one time why you won't marry me, and I'll quit asking. If you love me like you say you, you do. I do. Then why? You, you like a town? 
ranch ain't lively enough for you, is that it? No. I didn't build that ranch out there with my own hands, out of nothing. Just to live out there by myself with no wife and... and no children. Apologize, Dora. <laughs> I love you. I always will. I'm asking you for the last time, Dora. Will you marry me? I can't. I love you more than anything. But I can't marry you. just passing through and I thought I might grab a bed for the night. I didn't know you was having a shindig. Well... Who's getting married? Uh... Come and dance. I don't dance. Sure you do. Come on. Ain't the bride Grandville Stewart's daughter? Uh-huh. She was still a kid. Oh, no, she's, uh, <clears throat> she's uh, 18, 19. Which one of your cowboys is marrying her? The one you're dancing with. What the hell you say? Well, that's true. You son of a bitch! Simmer down, Martha Jane. Shh. Simmer down? You children the best friend I ever had. Does Dora know about this? Couldn't you tell her before she finds out from somebody else? You tell her yourself on your way straight to hell, Teddy Blue. I ain't doing your dirty work and I ain't dancing at your goddamn wedding. Martha Jane! Oh! inside. It's over. Plenty to eat and drink and, and music and everything. Just go, go on in. Enjoy yourselves. It's all over. I never thought you'd turn into a son of a bitch, Blue. Let me tell you something. You see this porch? I built this porch with my hands. A door. And, and a bathroom that's big enough to, to hold that copper tub that she loves so much. And, and a kitchen for doozy that she would have thought she'd have died and gone to heaven in. Dora never even came out to look at it. And every time I look at it, I know that she's never going to be here. 
to welcome me home. I guess I just... I just got tired of hoping, that's all. Yeah, well, what am I going to tell her? You just tell her that... nothing's changed. I will. But it ain't true. wanted to. He asked you plenty of times. Oh, now you're gonna take his side. I am not taking his side. God almighty, Dora. Blue let you down. I didn't, and if you can't see that, then the hell with both of you. <laughs> Where's my head? <laughs> Flapping Billy Cody. Hey, Martha Jane, I've traveled a thousand miles and I've gone to considerable expense to find you to make you a star of my Wild West show. Billy, I got a real itch to shoot somebody this morning. If it was an old friend, I'm advising you to stay out of my way. Now you think about it. Because we're going to play for the crowned heads of England. I'm going to put your name on the poster and I'm going to put your face on the poster. Yeah, I can see it now. Calamity Jane, half man, half woman. Right between the dog boy and the two-headed rattlesnake. No goddamn thing. Now you can assault me if you want to. I'm trying, but it don't seem to be taken. Damn fool sideshow. Dora. <laughs> Billy. Oh, look at you. Oh. These are for you. <gasps> Fiddle sticks. Dora ain't no child. She can't be bribed with this stuff. Doozy. If you used to appreciate presents a little bit, you might get some. You know, you make quite an impression on Doc Ramsey's name. Doc Ramsey's? He ain't big enough for me, Bill Cody. And neither are you. Billy, oh, it's beautiful. How did you know I would be my same size? Dora, if you used to lose your figure, half the men in the West would give up and get married. <laughs> Look at you, you already did give up and get married. How is Lulu anyway? That was a mistake. I should have married you, Dora. Well, what brings you to Montana? I'm recruiting talent from a Wild West show. We're going to play the Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Well, don't that take the cake? Yeah, I got Annie Oakley. You got cowboys. You got Indians. Hell, I got City Bull himself signed up. <laughs> have you gone crazy? The Indian Wars may be over in Missouri, but not out here. I can deal with Sitting Bull. Dora, I want you to come to Europe with me. You're going to love Europe. I'm... <laughs> Do you want cream or lemon with your tea? All oh, the hell with the tea. Open your presents, Dora. I got French champagne in here. <gasps> oh. oh, Billy, it's beautiful. Ooh. Dora, in my life, I've met hundreds of women. A lot of them rich and beautiful. But every night when I blow out my light, yours is the face I see. Now, we both know that I got rich telling whoppers, but them's the truest words I've ever said in this life. Are you gonna open that champagne? Dora. I dare say we're not too hard to track anymore. Probably left a trail of tobacco spit any city fire did to follow. Ah. 
This was once a, a lively town. Uh, ten years ago, there were two saloons up there. You know, we could have our own town. No ears. Could be the mayor. I'll be the judge. And you can be the sheriff. And you can arrest anybody that comes to town. Perfect. We could charge big fines for, for trespassing or for, for spitting on the street. It could be beavering as a way to get rich. And what's going to draw people? Your good looks or my sunny disposition? <laughs> Darling Janie, this bitter cold is something. I had to put the ink in the coffee pot to thaw it. It was froze solid. But I have to write these letters so you'll know a little bit about me. I could someday get ate by a bear, get my head stove in by some tough. Someone who runs loose like I do can get killed pretty quick. Sweet little girl like you shouldn't read this stuff. But someday, when you're grown, I hope you can read these letters and know something of your mother, Martha Jane. Oh, damn it to hell! What? What are we doing? Sleeping. What's got you so itchy? Look at your sour pusses, that's what. Look like you belong in the hospital, both of you. Mm. One that keeps an undertaker handy. Hey, you ain't one to be criticizing other people's appearances, Clive. I know. I look no better myself. Probably worse. We just got no business spending our lives wandering around sleeping in the snow. Hey, nice catch, no ears. I mean, we ain't kids no more. There ain't no more beefer. There ain't no dry firewood. It's just three fools and an engine. And the engine's only in it for the company. Except for Jim. So not one of us can hit a squirrel in broad daylight unless he stands ten feet in front of us and says, cheese. You don't usually complain. <laughs> Nobody's going to appreciate it if you throw a fit, Clavity. My point is, is that Billy Cody's right. The big adventure's over. It's over and that's that. He's right to make a show of it and sell it to the toots and dudes. I should have thought of a Wild West show. I got to the West long time before Billy. You ain't planning on joining Billy's spectacle, are you? No, I ain't. Not for a million dollars. Then where are you going, half cocked? You ain't even had breakfast yet. I'm going nowhere. I got nowhere left to go. But if you're smart, you'll stop sleeping in the damn snow. One of these warrants are gonna wake up froze today. White wind is a particular kind of blizzard, one that confuses everything. Even the best scouts refuse to move in a white wind. And I should have known better.
for the things I said before. I didn't mean them. You're my best friend. It's okay. You're safe. You're home. You're gonna be all right. Bless your heart. Improve around here. I'm gonna have to go back to entertaining customers myself. Seems like the more we make, the more we spend. We never get out of the hole. We might if we quit relocating all the time. How's this? <laughs> How are you feeling? Better. Uh, what were you fools doing out in the blizzard? We was looking for you. That's what. That's really God. nice of you, but don't be so stupid <laughs> yeah, next time. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm gonna see about getting you guys a couple of beds. Mm -hmm. But don't be getting any ideas about the girls. This is business. Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am, Dora. Thanks, dudes. I thought I saw you beaver boys sneaking in the back door. Jane, Doozy. How you doing, Billy? I brought you something to get the chill off. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, this here is Doc Ramsey's. Gentlemen. He's helping me get my show together. Much obliged, Bill. So what are you boys doing? Trapping beavers or what? <clears throat> Mostly or what? Beavers are all gone. Oh, Jim, he's reluctant to admit it. Oh, I know how you feel, Jim Rag. I feel the same way about the buffalo. But there's no sense grieving interminably. And I got a better proposition. I want you to join my illustrious company and I'm going to make you heroes. Thanks, dude. <laughs> no, we ain't no heroes. We ain't even in the army anymore. You got to think of the younger generation, Bartle. The plains is filling up with towns. Pretty soon, the only way people will have to see riding and shooting is in a Wild West show. Yeah, but you're, you are partly to blame, Billy. Yeah. You're the one who made the name Killing Buffalo. Next thing we knew, they was all gone, and the Indians was too starved to fight. Now, if we had just kept those buffalo, I believe that. I believe this whole business would have, would have lasted my lifetime. Bartle, that is something I regret myself. I'm buying buffalo. I'm trying to bring them back. I got over a hundred head grazing on my ranch. Yeah. Oh. You're buying buffalo? Everyone I see, Jim. Now, the way I see you boys is as Lewis and Clark. After all, it was their expedition that started the West. You'd be my stars. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Billy. But me and Jim would rather spit on the fly. You know? We'll make a mockery out of ourselves. Is there money in it? Money? It'd make you prosperous, Jim. I would go further. I'd say it's gonna make you rich. Well, I am happy to say that we cannot be bought for 30 pieces of silver. I can. I'm gonna be in it. Hey. Well, more than three people in a room, you, you, you climb up like a dummy. There's gonna be... Hundreds of people watching these shows. Thousands. Thousands. Do I have to talk? No. Then I'm in. Good, Jim. Welcome aboard. Now, Bartle, what about you? Now, come on, Bartle. Uh, Lewis and Clark ain't no heroes of mine. And the jackass can walk to Oregon. Don't be so stubborn. Who do you want to play? Geronimo? You... Bull. Cody. Uh, there you are, you old product of you. <laughs> hey. You planning to murder me for my valuables? You got that look in your eye. I just can't figure out what the name of Sam Hill could have possessed you to want to be part of the Galdern Circus. I need the money. What in the blazes you need money for? You can't even stand to sleep with a roof over your head. I got an inspiration. When Billy started talking about buffalo, I figured if he can buy buffalo, why not beaver? Buy beaver? Where on earth are you going to buy beaver? I don't know. But somewhere. I figured if we bought a few pairs and let them loose up in the high creeks, they could procreate 
and proliferate and be plentiful again. Is that why you joined up with Billy? Yep. I don't know why you're so cantankerous about it. You've been wanting to join up all along. Uh, oh, fool! So, what are you going to be, Lewis? And I'll be Clark, or what? No, I'll be Lewis. No, you no. be Clark. Oh, I'm going to be Lewis. <laughs> Martha Jane, oh, give me a beer. How the hell with that? Drink whiskey with me. Huh. You know I'm a, a reformed man, Martha Jane. Oh. Don't tell me your child bride made you change your foolish ways. I'm just too old to start drinking whiskey at 10 in the morning. Yeah, well, I'm too old to stop. Dora, she, um, <clears throat> she ain't, she ain't hurrying down this morning. Listen, Blue, she threw a mad dog tantrum at me just for going to your wedding. You figure out how mad she is at you. Uh, I wish you wouldn't take it so, so hard. Well, if it's not tea, Blue, what a surprise. Billy? Whiskey tea. You look, uh, prosperous. Circus life must be agreeing with you. What did Bartle and Jim say? Jim's in. Well, if you ain't got Bartle, you ain't got Jim. Well, what about you, Calamity? Did you reconsider my offer? You're an original. Well, Billy, my reputation's all I got. And it ain't for sale. How about you, Blue? I reckon you're still the best rider and roper around, even if you're looking a little over the hill. Oh, uh, sure, Billy. Next time there's a blizzard in hell. <laughs> Doozy! You're looking, uh, you're looking good. You're looking better than a skunk like you has any business looking. Uh-huh. You, uh, you got a message for me? I got a message, all right. Yeah? She's expecting Mr. Cody in her sitting room. <laughs> if you both will excuse me, Calamity. Very nice to see you. Uh -huh. I'm coming, Dora. <clears throat> Tea? Give me a whisk. Give one to Martha Jane. Now, Blue, don't get all crazy. I'm 40 years old, Martha Jane. More, probably. And unfortunately, I don't shoot people for that kind of stuff anymore. You hurt her real bad. You know she don't care about Billy. It's better than crying over you for a while. Now, you've been my friend a long time, Blue. If you feel lower than scum at the bottom of the pond right now, you got it coming. Hmm. Dave, give me a bottle. Hell, Blue. You still don't understand why Dora wouldn't marry you, do you? Nope. And I don't suppose I ever will. When Dora was small, she grew up in a farm in Kansas. They could barely scratch a living. When the war came, the soldiers stole the livestock. When the sickness came and they fell to it, Dora's sisters died. And her mother. The boys just run off. I never knew that. Finally, it was just Dora and her father. She was 11 when he died. She walked to Abilene, all the way, barefoot, thin as a twig. She never forgot the feeling of being hungry and watching everybody die. She's scared to death to live out on a farm, Blue. Afraid you'd go off and something might happen to you. Afraid she'd starve. <sighs> I wouldn't have let her starve. I would have built a whole barn full of beef if it would have made her happy. I know that, Blue. But you can't talk to fear like Doris. 
What? Didn't she tell me then? She was afraid if you knew, you might have moved to town to marry her. That would have killed your spirit. And seeing that would have killed Dora. Thanks. Thanks for telling me that, Martha Jane. Take care, Blue. Castle walls, darling. You're gonna get yourself killed, you fool. It will be an honor to die for you, Dora. Stand back, darling. I'm coming in. Uh. Hello? Jane told me. Told you what? Why you would marry me. Why didn't you tell me? I never would have married anybody. I could have learned to live in a town. No, no, you've got to live out on your ranch, on the land under the sky. That's who you are, Blue. But I would have done it for you, Dora. I would have done it for you. But it's too late. I know. What are we going to do, Dora? The best that we can. We'll just do the best that we can. Can you believe Bartle's gone in all years? Mr. Cody has invited me to join him on this great journey as well. Well, you ain't going, are you? I would like to see this water they speak of. They say it's so vast you can't see the far bank. What's the use of all that water? Can't drink it or water crops with it. A prairie of water you can't drink? No. <laughs> Salt. Do fish live in it? Yep. Some of them are as big as a house. These fish are as big as the boat? Yeah, some bigger. Maybe we should ride around this water. We can't. The ocean goes to the top of the world. I would like to know more about this ocean. Is because people fail to gather precise information about life-threatening matters that many of them are no longer alive. 
thought you were set on going then. I must see this water and these great fish and bring the knowledge back to my people. Reckon we're about to leave. <laughs> That's a mighty fine slicker, no way. Check up on that paint pony, will you? Miss Dora. Can you tell me all about the Queen when you come back? I sure wish you were coming with us, Dora. I deeply wish it. Will you show them. Show them how wild the West really is. Goodbye. Bye. Good Bye. Bye, Dora. You should have come with us, Calamity. It's gonna make you famous. I am famous. I can't stomach all this silly hanky way. Get the hell out of here. Bye, Clam. So long, y'all. They hadn't been gone a week when I got the letter that the woman I gave you to had died. My heart ached for you, sweetheart. I wanted so bad for you to know you had a mother. A mother who loves you. The captain said he'd taken you home to England. Don't that beat all. England. Right where my partners were headed without me. Why didn't you tell me? I could have helped you. Damn it to hell, Dora. This letter's been to hell and back. It's almost a year old. I should have gone with Billy. Maybe you can catch up to them. You have to try. She needs a mother and she's got one. Even a broken down old bullwhacker is better than no mother at all, I guess. Oh, you'd be a wonderful mother. And you can bring her back here and we can all live together. I thought it was best for her, Dora. There ain't a day gone by and regretted it. You did the best that you could. Yeah. Do you think I'm doing the right thing? Going after her? Honey, if I could see one of my babies again, even if I had to go halfway around the world, nothing could stop me. I don't even know where she is. I guess I gotta find her. If I could just see her one time, Dora. I'd die happy. You'll find her. I know you will.
You gonna miss me. <laughs> miss you already. Remember the first night that we saw Blue in that place in Abilene? Sure, I remember. And he was covered with dust. And he walked up to me and said, Ma'am, would you dance with me? <laughs> and the dust from his clothes kept making me sneeze. And we just laughed. And the more that I sneezed, the more we laughed. That was when I, I knew that we were both done for. And then later that night, he rode his horse right up the stairs to my room. <laughs> Kicked the banister right off. <laughs> what are you going to do with a fellow like that? Coming halfway around the world to find you. I aim to bring you home and give you all the things I should have given you all along. I ain't never been lucky, but either my luck has finally changed or God's taken pity on a confirmed old sinner like your mother. I caught up to Billy's show in New York as they were pulling up the anchor. An hour later, and I'd have had to swim for it. Jane, you almost missed your chance of me making you famous. I told you, Billy, I already am famous. I'm gonna let you make me immortal. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. It's great to see you, too. Come on. Doing here. I thought you wanted nothing to do with this debacle. Well, to tell you the truth, I just couldn't live without you, boys. I had myself to sleep every night. Oh, yeah, I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> Think this rig will get us all the way to England? <laughs> I'll be dang. Sitting bull. Billy's crazy. Tell me, why have you forsaken your people? Perhaps you haven't realized, Sitting Bull, we are both on this boat together. Then you will die alone in the water, and I'll feed you to the fish. Howdy, Chief. How'd you like a little smoke? Think about whether you want to trade in your life or his. Is it a good cigar? Oh, yeah, it's real good. He has become too popular. It has confused him about what is important. Nah, he never knew about what was important. What the hell is that? Paul! Oh. Annie Oakley? Lamb DJ. How do you do? How do you? Seeing as you're the only two females in this here outfit, how about I buy you a little drink? 
Thank you, but I don't drink. Oh. Well, uh, how about if I join you? See how I do against the world's famous marksman. I'm sorry, but I only compete in the arena. If you excuse me, I do need to practice. Oh, me too. I need to practice too. Pull! Man! Pull! I got that one. I hit that last one. Were you going to leave without saying goodbye to me? Why do you have to go to Belfouche? This is a good town for business. You mean it's convenient for you? I'm just the right distance off so you can come and visit me and your new little wife won't find out about me? Don't you pull that on me. A wife is one thing. Love is... Love is another. I never would have married her if... If I'd understood, I never would have married her if you told me the truth in the first place. Dora, Dora, it's not too late to change your mind. It is too late. It's over. It's done. I've sold this place. Dora. Don't start with me, Blue. You don't deserve feeling sorry for it, and I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Well, I'm not going to Belfouche. Good. Maybe it's better that way. Maybe it is. If the whole point is to get as far away from me as you possibly can, maybe you should have gone to England with Martha Jane and Billy Cody. You could have been a regular hell-raising Lily Langtree. Maybe you should have gone to England. Oh, yeah. You're a better rider and roper than any of those other cowboys. Come here. like it's always been between us. I can't. Every time it gets harder for me to let you go, it's gotten to the point where I fear you're leaving from the moment that you arrive. It makes it awful hard to find any joy in life. Don't ever think that the loving and the hurt ain't, ain't on, on both sides. Darling Janie, your mother was not meant for sea travel. The boat rolls day and night. I had no notion there was so much water in the world. No ears saw a whale today and thinks it is the most extraordinary event of his long life. He thinks it might be the first fish may be the first creature of any kind. He said it was so large that it might even be as old as the world itself. He ain't even got to England yet and he can hardly wait to get home again to tell his people about the whale. I don't think I ever saw him so happy. London 
is a great place. It ain't the same sky we have back home. I ain't never been no great tracker, but this place has me so confounded I can't even tell which way is which. No sun or mountains to take your bearings from. Just buildings everywhere you look. I can't figure out how all these people can tell where the hell they're going, let alone how I can find one house and one little girl. You boys go on exploring. I got me some business to tend to. Yeah, what, what kind of business you got in these parts? <laughs> you know I ain't exactly the church-going type, Cheney. Generally, even my backsliding goes unrepented. A little prayer keeps going round and round in my head. Please let me find my little girl. The sun has not gone down a single day that I ain't regretted giving you away. I know I ain't no blue ribbon prize, but I ain't a quitter neither. By God, I'm gonna find you, honey, or go belly up trying. Because whatever else I am, I will always be your mother, Martha Jane. Miss Canner, I, I knew you were in London. I've seen the posters of your show everywhere. She didn't expect to see me again. Please come in. Please come in. May I offer you some tea? No, thank you. Something a little stronger, perhaps? No. Thank you, definitely no. I'm sorry about your wife. Thank you. Please, sit down. Jane is just a little girl, and seems to me she needs a mother. I may not be much, but I am her mother, and I guess she's got a right to know it. I can understand your feelings, of course, and in many respects you are right. But you must also understand that Janie knows nothing at all about you. As far as she is concerned, we are her natural parents. That's what you told her. Yes, it is. We believed it would make her happier. And she has been a very happy child. Well, I don't want to scare her or nothing. But I want to take her home with me. Miss Cannery, when I first met you, you didn't have a home. And the life that you were leading was hardly appropriate to bringing up a child. Now, you tell me how your circumstances have changed. Well, my friend Dora, that's Miss Dufran, has offered us her house to share, and we'd be a good family to Janie. You wouldn't have to worry about that. She'd never go cold or hungry. What kind of house is it exactly? It's just, you know, a house. When can I meet her? I'm not sure that that would be at all wise. Mister, I'm going to tell you one way or the other. I'm coming back and I'm going to see her. by the pint. One hell of a country. <laughs> you must be Annie Oakley. What? Annie Oakley, the famous Marx woman. Ain't her. Give me another one. <laughs> Come on! Who are you then? 
I am goddamn Calamity Jane. I can outshoot and outride that prissy little Miss Oakley with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Look at this. She devil of the yellow Scout for gentle Damn fine shot, too. <laughs> The English are all kind of skittish, ain't you? Right, 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 on your way. I'll be putting this fellow at number 10. Right, There's a tavern in the town. There's a tavern in the town. Yep. Get it. Where the hell are you dragging me to now? Just wait, I got an idea. <laughs> there, this fog is solid. I have never seen such a such a place before. One minute, you can see where you're going, and the next minute you you can't hardly see your feet. This way. Yeah. Well, I'll be blowed. Ain't they a sight? <laughs> yeah. said you found beaver, but I didn't believe it. Boys, I need money. How much you got? Not much. I'm putting it away for something important, Calam. It's just a loan, Jim. Did I ever not pay you back? Yeah, plenty of times. Come on, Bartle, how much you got? Well, no, I need some back. Tell her what for. Well, I have a weakness, Calamity. What I don't know about you, mean? If you're blind and deaf, you don't. I've got an overpowering fondness for <laughs> red-haired ladies. Why, party phone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it back. Yeah. Hope it makes you happy, Bartle. Really? It don't usually last long, man. But there are moments of the jail. Moments of true and outright joy. Mm. Jim. I swear, Jim. Thanks, fellas. You're true friends. Plank will ever see that money again. Gentlemen, can we please try it again? Annie is the only one in the show still allowed to use real bullets in her guns. I've been watching her like a hawk, and have yet to see her miss once. I 
need an advance on my wages for the run of the show? All of it. Yeah, and if I get thrown in jail one too many times, you can just let me rot. Well, hell, yeah, I'll give you the money. But I won't hear another word about there's not another nickel till the end of the year. Thanks, Billy. I'll drive the hell out of that stage. Listen, if you get an idea to shoot up another saloon, you go ahead and I'll bail you out, because it's good publicity. Thanks, Billy. small bet. I'm a shooting match tomorrow between Annie Oakley and the Stukrelli y'all got shooting for your side. Lord. Lord Windhoven. I think there are those of us who'd put money on the English marksman carrying the day. Good. How do the odds stand? Two to one. Favoring the Englishman. Let's make it a little more interesting. Contest is best out of a thousand shots. What would the odds be if I bet Annie Oakley beat this guy by ten shots? <laughs> I'd say you could easily get three to one. Fine. And if she beat this fella by forty shots? <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, what would the odds be? You'd be throwing your money away. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm looking for ten to one. And he beats this guy by 40 shots, and I put up 200 pounds. Anybody take that bet? Come on over here to the table. We'll find some fella we can trust to hold on to it for us. All right, sir. You're charged with trespassing. Just the fellow we can trust. Hey, hold on to this for us. There's no need to arrest this gentleman, officer. But we would appreciate it if you'd hold the fund until a small wager is settled. Glad to do it, Lord Window. See, so you're ill. Well, this should be fun. I would certainly like to know the name of the man who would bet so heavily on my defeat. Name's Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane? Have a good time at the suit match! <laughs> Miss Oakley? Can I speak to you privately for a minute, please? Do you mind? No, no. What is it? See you later. Well, I need your help. But I can't very well ask you without telling me why. I know how to keep a confidence. Sure. Well, a few years ago, I had a child. Oh, see, that's why I came out here. Find my little girl. Now I need enough money to bring Ron back home. So I've scraped together everything I could and bet it all on your shooting match tomorrow. You gambled it all? Everything you have? Yep, and then some. Oh. Am I supposed to win or lose? Oh, win, of course. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. You're the best anybody's ever seen. I met this English lord, he ain't much. How much do I have to win by? 40 shots. I'll do my best, but even if I hit every one out of a thousand, that means he's still gonna have to miss at least 40. I ain't never been lucky, but you have. You're the luckiest person I ever saw. Jane, 
When I was five, my father died, leaving my mother with seven children to raise. I took his old rifle off the mantel and learned how to use it. If I missed a bird or a squirrel we didn't eat, I learned not to miss. It wasn't luck. It was necessity. I sure got plenty of that. Well, it seems to me, in the long run, good and bad luck kind of balance each other out. I ain't got time for the long run. I got to do everything right this time. It's the only chance I'll ever have. Thanks, you miss. Yes. Here, let me get that for you. Thank you. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> um, I, I. Where was you headed, ma'am? Actually, I'm, I'm just there. Oh. What's your name, mister? Ogden. Ogden Perdo. Nice to meet you, Mr. Perdo. Here's your shoe, All right, come on. Don't get on back inside. Well, now that you've rescued me, would you like a cup of tea? Are you fond of tea? Tea? I mean, maybe you should hitch your wagon first. Oh. Um, we haven't been formally introduced. I'm Miss Dora Dufran. I would be pleased if you would join me for a cup of tea. After you've hitched your wagon, of course. Oh, ma'am, I, I intend to be right back. You ain't coming back in them muddy boots. Don't get all worked up. I ain't had five pounds of mud on my floors this early. We ain't open yet, Dora. We ain't even unpacked. You may not be open yet, but I am. I don't think it's gonna kill anybody if I have a gentleman for tea. Huh. From the looks of him, he can drink a bucket of tea. Then you best go get a bucket. Hmm. Ogden? Ma'am? You seem awfully far away. Would you mind if I sat a little bit closer? Sit in a place you like, Miss Dora. Thank you. Am I too heavy? No, ma'am. You're as light as a feather. Well, then why don't you pick me up and carry me over to that bed? Go on like this. You mean me staying here? Would you like to marry me, Ogden? <clears throat> you mean like Mom Paul? 
Mm. Yeah, like mom and pa. Well, we do it today or when? <laughs> when we could, or tomorrow. Well, let's do it today so you don't change your mind. I'm not gonna change my mind. I can't believe she missed one. She never missed one before. Oh, for goodness sake. She hit the first 99. Oh. She's only human. It ain't a good time for her to be only human. How come? How, oh. how much you got on this? Everything. Everything. Oh! The, the, the redhead money, the beaver money, on all the beds. Are you crazy? Goddamn calamitous is what I am. Oh. Ready? What do you pick up, Stone? I think. I think he's got a loose shoe. I can take care of that. Yeah. You know where uh, Dora Dufran's establishment is? That's it right over yonder. Hotel Royale. Who's that? His name's Ogden Perdo. Uh huh. Why is he painting doors? Why? Because he's married to her. That boy is married to Dora? Yep. Talk of the town. I'll be in the saloon. found out or else he'd be on his way here. What if he shoots Ogden? If he shoots him, he better shoot him dead, because Ogden's big. What am I going to do, Dizzy? What am I going to do? Right. Tell me what All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, go downstairs and give Ogden the rifle and tell him he should go shoot an elk. Good. Uh -huh. He could take the wagon. And tell him no matter how long it takes, he's not to come back here without that elk. Hey, Blue. Frank. Whiskey. Hell, I ain't seen you since Deadwood days. Hey, now, don't you go disturbing the peace, all right? I mean, the jail here ain't up to your standards. I ain't disturbing the peace. She must still like you. There goes Ogden. <laughs> hey, well, maybe he'll use up all his ammunition hunting. Won't have any left to kill you with when he comes back and finds you with his wife. You're gonna find me with this wife.
Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be mad at me. Send you a couple of them. Maybe. Yeah. And if they don't, maybe I'll stay here and not go back. I ain't I ain't living my oh. life here no way. Well, yours is yours and mine's mine. Oh. I have lived 35 years with you and by God. You would rather have the company of a beaver. Anymore. Dora, I keep, I keep telling you that my marriage hasn't changed the way I feel about you. And that's the truth as far as I'm concerned. Did your marriage change everything? No, not everything. Some things can't be changed. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go. Just five more minutes. What if he gets an elk? I'm not going to find an elk for five or ten miles. What... Whatever possessed you to marry that... <clears throat> that boy? I don't know. Hmm? He carried me out of the mud. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is the sanest reason for getting married I ever heard. I wish I'd have known that in Deadwood or Dodge City. There's plenty of mud there. We could have had ten grandkids by now. No, don't talk like that. You'll make me cry. Oh, hush, Dora. The sky ain't falling. You got a fine strapping youth to take care of you. Better than a broken down old cowpoke like me. But I love you the most. I can't help it. I love you the most. I know you do. Sometimes things just get away from me. I guess they do. Who got married first? Oh, let's not argue about who got married <laughs> first. We can argue about that till, till bulls grow teats. It won't make, it won't make any difference. Hmm? And what, what about this, <clears throat> this boy? See, uh, is he old enough to, uh... <clears throat> Is he old enough to talk? Don't be mocking my husband. He's a peach of a boy, and I'm fond of him. Uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to call him... Um, ox. You know what the function of an ox is. The function of an ox is to, um... <clears throat> is to take you out of the mud. And as long as you restrict him to, uh... To my duty, you won't hear no complaint from me. Mm. Well, it turns out I needed somebody. He's only a boy, but he's a good boy. I was only joshing you, Dora. I've, I've joshed you a thousand times before. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm not myself.
going to come see the show now. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Annie Oakley, the greatest American markswoman of all time, has won the day. What's the score? I can't look. Oh, she's going to win easy. Easy. Yeah, but how much? The final score, Lord Windhoven, 935, and Miss Annie Oakley, 984. Yeah. <laughs> 84 minus 35. I can't think. Is that more than 40, Bartle Hill? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. 35, 45, 55, 60. Good bet, madam. Oh, well done. <laughs> Better shot than Billy Cody, if that's any consolation. It's not, but thank you. Yeah. I only wish he was a drinking woman. I never wanted to buy somebody to drink so bad my entire life. As a matter of fact, I am feeling extremely thirsty. Here's to Annie Oakley, the greatest shot that ever lived. No, no. To all of us Buffalo girls, we gotta stick together. Yeah! Whoa. Whoa. Got one, Doozy. Yeah. Come on in. You did good. What's the matter? Are you sick? <laughs> oh. Dora? I guess I know why you're crying. me no more. It's all right, though. I'm, I mean, I was, I was expecting this and all. Okay. I find you well. Yep, I'm real well. Thank you. Good. Is Janie here? Can I see her? No, I'm afraid she is out at the moment. Did you tell her about me? No, I did not. I told you I was coming back. I know. Miss Cannery, I will do nothing that could disturb or upset Jane's life. You son of a snake. I am only considering Jane's best interests. The hell you are. She's my daughter. She needs the sun and the sky and the Rocky Mountains, and she needs me. I could show her things most people just dream about. Could you? Yes, I could. Then come with me. You've thrown me out, mister. No, I am not. I want to show you something. Come with me.
Come, darling, come, come. Daddy, did you see me? Did you see me jump that tree? I did, my darling, and it was wonderful. Jenny, I'd like you to meet Miss Cannery. How'd you do? Well, a whole lot better now that I get to meet you. Miss Cannery has come a long way, all the way from America. She's a kind of... Kind of a cousin. A cousin. Have I ever met you before? Yep. But you're just a little bitty thing. Too young to remember me. Oh. That was some pretty good riding. Thank you. You ride. I got me a big black stallion. He was pretty wild in his younger days. I love horses, don't I, Daddy? Yes. I hope to have my own one day. I know you will. Do you really think so? Come on, Jane, it's getting late. We better go back. Are you coming to dinner with us? Well, I wish I could. But I know we'll meet again. Come on. Bye. Bye, bye Janie. I'm getting better and better. Yes, you are, darling. But are you listening to your instructions? Oh, yes, of course, darling. What did you learn today? Though? I learned to go from trot to canter. How to put on one hell of a show. They got so famous they put a statue of him in Madame Tussaud's wax museum. They dragged me to see it, and in the basement, I found the damnedest things. Look, here's some special glue. How's that? Can you hear better? I can hear many things. Back that ear. 
You have no bullet. Sorry, I forgot. You mess with no ears, I'll eat your liver. Go grab it, you're on! Go! Get on your horses! Janie has been pleading with me to allow her to come and see the show. And so finally, I had to give in and bring her. I didn't know that you were clamour to Jane. Is it really the last night? Can't we come again tomorrow? Well, will you say you and me go for a little ride together? I'm not sure. Just round the ring. She'll be safe with me. Can I, Daddy? Please? Very well. Come on. In my lifetime, I've had a lot of misadventures. But my great joys have been few. The time I held you in my arms the day you were born, and the time I held you sitting up there in front of me in the saddle like I imagined you hundreds of times. You're real to me now, Janie. And for the first time, I can finally let you go. I'm here on behalf of the mayor of 10 Sleep, Montana, and the judge and sheriff, too, for that matter. We've been figuring on starting up a kind of zoo of our own and supplying it with samples of all the animals that are native to the area. But we've been having trouble with the beaver. You see, the beaver's been all trapped out. We looked all over them parts, but have been unable to find any. So I was wondering if you could see your way clear to selling us a healthy pair. One male and one female. So they, so they might, so they might, you know. What do you say, would you sell us a pair of your own? Comanche. He's the best horse in the show. He might look like a big handful right now, but you take charge of him and make him respect you. For me? Really? Yeah, he's for you. I will, I promise. Excuse me, please. I'm so moment. glad we have the same name. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Or maybe just. not just like me. But there'll always be a streak of me in you. And a streak of your daddy, too. Goodbye, little Janie. All right. 
back to you. Goodbye, Calamity. What's the matter? You've been moping and moaning around here ever since Blue left. I ain't feeling so good. What's ailing you? You wanted a husband. You got you one. <laughs> now I think I'm gonna have a child. it myself if you wasn't so puffy from all that crying. <laughs> Get back in bed and stay there. You ain't gonna do a lick of work till you have this baby. I got too much to think about to get in bed. Oh, think laying down. You done miscarried twice. I'm scared enough without you bringing that up. I'm trying to scare you enough to get you back in that bed. Maybe to be a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be so dull around here if we had us a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be sure, Doozy, but in my heart, I think it's Blue's child. Well, that don't matter much. Babies got to take what they can find. They can't be worried about this paw, that paw. Well, let them have two paws if they can find two, huh? <laughs> hey. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Both the babies that I lost were Blue's. The little girl didn't live but three hours, and the little boy lived two months. I, I wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for Blue. Well, if you want a good, strong, live baby, please, get on up and go lay down. I'll make you a bowl of soup. <laughs> Come on. You my baby now. <laughs> <laughs> Jim. We should make camp. But it ain't close to nightfall. We should stop now, make camp. He don't make sense, but he ain't never wrong. Jim, ain't you gonna hunt up some measly looking critter for supper? <laughs> Bartle, what do you figure? Five to ten years, and the beaver will take hold and be plentiful again. Yeah, maybe. We've seen some glory days. You and me. Sure we did, Jim. Some glory days. Oh, 
Sebastián. There is a God, Janie. And after all I've seen, I feel certain of it. Maybe we each had a reason for going all the way to the other side of the world. No ears got to see the first fish. Jim? Well, there's always been something of the preacher in Jim. The sermon just happened to be Beaver. Bartle got to see the world, shake hands with the queen, and have a few moments of outright red-headed joy. As for your mother, honey, if I'd had to go to the moon and back for just one look at your sweet face, it would have been worth all the trouble. I'm not going with you, Martha Jane. I'm going to walk north to the Platte River. That's hundreds of miles. I need to find my people, if there are any of us left. And tell them about the great whale fish. I'll help you find your people. The weather's good. It'll be a pretty walk. I'm headed to Doris in Belfouche. You should come for the winter if you can make it. You oughtn't to be wintering hard at your age. I'll be listening for your coming with my new ears. I'll be seeing you no ears. Congratulations, ma'am. You may take possession whenever you like. Thank you. Ogden, I just bought a hotel, a beautiful, elegant hotel. We're moving to Deadwood in the Dakotas. You mean after the baby comes? No, after lunch. Thank you. Get a piece of food out there. Put it in the first place. It's oh, honey, leave the piano. We'll buy a grand one once we get the hotel prospering. Downright crazy to be moving now. No, it's not. If I wait till after the baby's born, it'll be winter, and I can't wait till spring. Look at that. It's Martha Jane. And Bartle. Oh, I wonder where Jim is. Martha Jane! I'm so glad you're back. We ain't all back. Jim's dead. What did he die of? It's one of them senseless things, I guess. What's this? A lot happened while you were gone. Yes. Who's the sap sucker? That's Ogden. He's my husband. How do? How do? I guess for once I'm tongue tied. <laughs> Come on, let's have a drink. Did you find her, Jamie? No. She's beautiful. Aren't she beautiful? She's even more precious than her picture. She 
looks just like you. Come see you. I missed you so much, dear. You too, Nora. So what you gonna do, Bartle? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll track down Billy Cody and sign back on with his show. I don't mind the show business. It's a, it's a job. Pays well. I never thought I'd hear you want for work, Bartle. Maybe you just miss some red-headed English whores. Maybe I do. I expect I'll see you sometime, Bartle. Always have. I expect. Seems the glory days, Bartle. You and I. The like of which may never come again. Yeah. You and me. And old Jim. <laughs> Bye, Clown. Bye, Bartle. Furry little sons of bitches. They could procreate and proliferate. Jim? And be plentiful again. I'm telling you right now, I ain't never moving no more. Well, never say never. Say never about something life will spit it right back at you. <sighs> Look at me, I said I would never get married. You married? But I ain't you, and I ain't never moving no more. Will you go lie down now? All dead! Yeah? You got that bed put up? I will still be fed, though. Start on up the stairs if you can make it. You look like you about ready to drop that baby right where you're standing. It's coming. The pain's started. Land sakes. Ah, oh, Dad! Come on, pick up. Come on, pick up. And your baby. Where's the baby? Let me hold the baby. There you go. Jim. 
big, healthy girl. You're gonna be just fine. Lucy, I promise you'll stay. Of course I'll stay. I already told you I wasn't moving no more. I'll go get you some cool milk. Gotta start getting your strength back. Where's Mother Jean? She uh, saw that pace from around. Mother Jane? You better come up now. I've been come on down the kitchen, get some food in you. You look like you about ready to take sick yourself. Come on. Mother Jane, I'll sit with it. Take a taste. I'll hold her for you. No. You take her. You raise her for me. She's gonna need a good mother. Say. Martha Jane. Hey, Blue. Uh, you turn up in the darndest places. Never thought I'd see you stringing wire. Uh, well, if you're looking for a job, you're hired. I wish that's what I'd come for, Blue. Is everything all right with Dora? She had a baby girl. This time the baby left. The baby left? It's just beautiful. Just like her mom. Her eyes are blue. Janie, I'm sorry it's been so long since I've written to you. After Dora died, I lacked the spirit to take up my pencil. 
The baby is well and beautiful. Bartlett's gone in the show business. He plays in a melodrama, a villain they call Black Bart, and has married him a red-headed actress who bosses him around something awful. Well, he don't seem to mind. I try to stay put most times, but sometimes I have to take to wandering God's foothills, glorious Rocky Mountains. In my mind, I still hear Bartle and Jim, argumentary as ever. Now and then, I'll come across one lone buffalo or a beaver, and it warms my heart. But never a day goes by that I don't miss my darling baby girl. I'll always be your mother, Calamity Jane.